All right, we welcome those that's on uh, live stream with us here this morning. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit's in the house. But he's here to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, I do want to make a quick announcement before uh, we get into the Word. Uh, Brother uh, Sammy Cab Cabinus, am I saying that? Cabinus? Yeah, I'm saying that right. Uh, he is going to be at the Helping Hands Outreach Old Skating Rink tomorrow night. Say tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at uh, 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. And uh, they're going to serve food. And um, it will be his first sermon to preach. And he's from, and I don't remember the name, the little Baptist church he's from. New Life, New Life a Church. And uh, so we want to go there and just support him. I've never met him, but anybody that will step out in the ministry, I'm all for them, aren't you? Amen. Amen. So just remember that tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. If you don't have somewhere else to go, go out and, and just be in service and have something to eat. Amen? Amen? All right. Swords in the air. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. It's God's holy, word. God's holy Word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, um, the, the Lord dropped this in me a few days ago, and I jotted down. And then uh, last evening, I uh, ran some research and studied out what he wanted us to have today. But um, what does it say on the screen? Planning, preparation, and purpose. Planning, preparation, and purpose. And those are three areas that we're going to look at today for, say this out loud, for my personal life. Let's do that like we mean it. For my personal life. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I looked up in a couple of different places uh, the definition of these words. And so I'm going to give that to you. Planning. It's, uh, planning said a method of action. Planning is a method of action. And then in the Webster it said... Uh, to decide on future acts. And so, you know, uh, for many years I worked in the world of retail before I retired from that. And uh, we always said, uh, you know, if you, don't, if you don't have a plan to succeed, then you plan to fail. That will come automatic because you have to have a plan. And what does that mean? That means that's something that I've got to... Um, I've got to think about, I've got to make some decisions about, uh, because, uh, see, if we have a tendency to let, uh, let the time of life carry us, and what I mean by that is that whatever, you know, just, and a lot of people think this, they believe this, that everything that happens, it's God's will. Well, see, I could biblically prove that all wrong, because it wasn't his will for Adam and Eve to rebel against him in the garden. That wasn't God's will. His will was them to never die, to live forever, to, to, to live healthy and wholesome. But that didn't happen because the enemy came. Say, the enemy came. And then I'll hear some people say, well, you know, brother so-and-so got killed in a car wreck at 30, and that was God's will. He called him home. No, he didn't call him home. He had an accident and it took his life. And the, uh, you know, so uh, there are things that happen in this life that God gets the blame for it. And he wasn't, he wasn't anything about that. Amen. Okay. But if we're not careful, our everyday life, a, a week will pass, a month will pass, a year will pass, uh, you know, and then we'll, we'll turn around and look and, and there's been many years past that we're just kind of letting life, letting, letting life do whatever, just be whatever. There's no plans or purpose on it. How many knows that you can't just go out and, and, um, and, and start building a house on the ground? 
But there has to be first blueprints drawn up. And there has to be a plan, a, a direction of where you're going to go. You know, and, and like this, you can't go out and to build a house and say, well, I want a yellow one with purple polka dots. And then next week say, no, I think I'll change my mind. I'm going to have, I'm going to have green and blue stripes. No, I don't want that. And pretty soon you've spent your wheels doing nothing. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so taking that principle, and, and back when I was working in the world of retail, uh, the first thing that I would do when I would go into stores, they called me the hatchet lady because I, I had to turn in reports on how well the managers were running them stores, and, you know, they always had excuses. Well, the reason, and I said, I don't want to hear the reasons. You're the manager. You're the responsible one. If you have employees that aren't showing up, why are you letting them still come in and give them a paycheck? You see what I'm saying? You know, without a plan, uh, I would go into stores and there'd be more merchandise in the back room than there was on the floor. And that was because, because, you know, there's a because. Well, the reason was because they wouldn't do their job or, or they kept, uh, kept missing work or, or, or. But see, we must have a plan in place if we're going to accomplish anything in this earth whether it be for the kingdom of God or in the natural realm in our natural everyday lives. We have to make a plan and a preparation. Jackie likes to plant flowers and stuff. He can't just go out there and just throw them on the ground and say, well, you know, we're just going to wait and see what happens. How many know, so Sister Marie and Linda was sharing with me this morning about uh, doing some different things in their yard. Marie, did there have to be a plan for that? Did you have to decide how many boards to, uh, to buy and how much dirt and, and what flowers would go here? That's planning. That's take, say this out loud. That's taking action. Okay, so we're going to go somewhere. Don't let me lose you here this morning. Okay, so planning is something that you decide on future acts, something that is to come. Amen? Amen. Something in the future. So first of all, you've got to plan to live a full life on purpose. Say this out loud, on purpose. Now, let me tell you something that I give a response to. Now, you all know if somebody says, how are you doing out there? I usually say I'm marvelous and that'll, you know, kind of get, a, get an open door sometime for me to witness about the Lord. Uh, but uh, uh, another saying that I say often um, is this. When uh, someone will say, uh, you have a nice day, I will say, yes, and you too on purpose. You decide on purpose that you're going to have a good day. And they'll look at me real funny and then they'll, they'll say, well, yeah, yeah. I'll say, see, you have to decide that. And that opens a door for me to, to plant again, to not just let the enemy, say this out loud, I'm not going to let the enemy have my days. But who's going to decide that? See, God's not going to decide that because God already decided that. He sent his son to give you authority and dominion and power over all the powers of darkness in this earth. So that decision, see, that decision has been made and paid. It was made and paid. And so now then, we've got to decide if we're going to let the enemy back us up and, and defeat us or are we going to stand our ground? See, there was a little song come to me this morning. It goes like this. I'm going to press my way through. Press my way through, cause Jesus is waiting for me to press my way through. I'm going to press my way through, press my way through, cause Jesus is waiting. For me to press my way through. Let's all sing it. Here we go. I'm going to press my way through. Press my way through. Because Jesus is waiting for me to press my way through. Press my way through. Press my way through. Jesus 
is waiting for me to press my way through. And see, there's times that if we don't press our way through that circumstance, we don't press our way through that situation, then we will have given the enemy a foothold to take that. And so, so the, the deciding factor is us planning planning on purpose to succeed. And you remember what the Lord said, and he reminded me that uh, when I was studying that what he said to us last Sunday. You remember? Do you remember what he said? What did he say? I'm sorry, say that louder. It's the first day of the rest of our lives. And so guess what today is? The first day of the rest of our life. So are we going to make plans to succeed? Are, are we, and uh, you know, and, I, and I've got a lot here, and so I'm going to try to throw it out there and get, get at least a, a large percentage of it this morning. <clears throat> so we're going to turn to Proverbs chapter 3, and I just got one verse right there I want to give you. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 6. See, if it was God's will for, uh, for bad things to happen to you, then he would not have given us a tool called prayer to change those things. And, um, you know, uh, when um, um, Ma uh, Melissa was telling her testimony this morning about the Lord saving her daughter out of that car wreck, that was a miracle. That was a God thing. If I've ever seen anything that was a God thing, when I saw the picture of that car, that God spared her life. And see, God did that for me. When I lived in Portland, Oregon, I flipped that car end over end up in La Grande uh, uh, Mountains, and uh, my car hydroplaned, and it flipped end over end twice, and, and it was such a powerful impact that it jabbed my toothbrush because I was traveling, and it jabbed my toothbrush uh, in the back of that car seat like a javelin. And that was how, how the, uh, the impact was. And I came out of it with a couple of bruises. And that was it. No broke bones, no cuts, no nothing. I can tell you, but at that same time, see, uh, the Holy Spirit unctioned my mother at that very moment and said, pray. And she had the whole church to pray. And, she, and they prayed by the Spirit. And see, that's why the enemy wants to fight you about speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. But I'm here to tell you today that, number one, praying by the Spirit, praying in a, a heavenly language is biblical. It is all through the Bible. It is biblical. And if you do not have your, your language, your, your um, a holy language, then you need to seek God for it so you can pray by the Spirit. But just like Melissa said, the, the Holy Spirit unctioned her to pray by the Spirit that morning. And, and you know what? Uh, God, God would not have unctioned her. He would not have unctioned my mother if it was his will for me to get killed in the Grand Organ. It was not his will for me to get killed. It was not his will. Say that out loud. It's not his will. It's not his will. And so when somebody wants to come peddling that stuff to you, you need to just stop them right then and say, hey, I don't know who, what God you serve, but the one I serve is not about that. He gave me authority and dominion in the earth. He gave me a name that's above every name. He gave me the Holy Spirit to live in me, with me, lead, guide, and direct me. And I'm very sorry that your God wants you to, have, to be sick and afflicted and down and out and bad things happen to you, but you need to come over and know my God. How about that? Huh? How about that instead of chiming in? Amen. Amen. But see, again, we have to decide if we're going to testify or not. We have to decide if we're going to, going to share Jesus with somebody or not. Amen. 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 See, it comes, it comes with our deciding and making plans and prayer. How many of us, and don't show me your hands because I don't want any lying in the house, but how many every morning you say, Father, who, who can we affect today? Who, whose lives can we affect today? Can we touch today? Mm -hmm. Y'all just look at me and smile saying, I know we're all okay. But see, we have to make, make a plan to even reach people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. And I, I'm not going to beat you up right there. All right. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In a few of your ways, acknowledge you. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody reprimanded me. What does it really say? In all 
all thy ways. What does that mean? That means when I'm going to run down to the grocery store. That means when I'm in the shower. That means uh, if I'm out working in the yard. Is that my ways? Are those my ways? Now, we're not talking about being, uh, trying to be a Christian here. We're talking about, every, say, everyday life. In everyday life, everyday life, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Not maybe, not might be, but he shall direct thy paths. Now, we have paths that are set in front of us. Thank you, Father. We have paths that are set in front of us, but we get to choose which path we're going to walk down. I, today, I could choose to walk down an easy path. Sin, sickness, you know, don't stand for nothing, just fall for everything, anything, because he gives us a mind and a will to either choose one way or the other, doesn't he? Didn't he say in his word, choose you this day whom you're going to serve? See, I, every day it's a decision whether I'm going to serve Jesus or not. And I don't think that because I'm a pastor that I don't have plenty of opportunities not to. But I have to make a, a deciding factor that no, I don't care what the whole world is doing. I am going to serve Jesus. Huh? Is that a decision that I have to make? Okay, then because that I make that decision, here's what God has given me something to back me up. Because see, we fall into stuff. And, and uh, I know especially those who are coming out of, of, um, of habits that are killing them. You say, well, what do you mean? You, I don't have to go there. I don't have to me- pedal and meddle. There are habits uh, that, that, that are killing us, that are killing you, that are defeating you. And how, how uh, see, you got to make a decision that I'm breaking this thing. I'm coming out. Because yeah, if you don't make that decision, because see, we hear these words. Well, I'm just waiting for God to deliver me. Well, see, God delivered you over 2,000 years ago. He paid a price of blood. He paid a price of his own son to break every yoke, to set man free. But that decision comes from you. You know what? I was talking with someone just here recently, uh, not this past week. And you know what they said? They don't even go to church. This person that I was talking to don't go to church. In fact, don't even know if they believe in God or not. And they quit uh, quit uh, smoking weed and doing cigarettes and, and started naming off all the stuff they did. And I said, well, how did you do it? And you know what they said? I made up my mind that I was done. Yes, that's right. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me that God's people's up in the house. They can't quit doing all this stuff. And here, here was somebody who's a rank sinner made a decision to stop and they can stop. No, let me tell you, you peddle something wrong here because you're waiting on God to do something and you got to make a decision that I'm changing the way I live. I'm fixed to start doing this and stop doing that. You say, yeah, but I just can't. I can tell you this. If somebody had a 45 to your temple and said, if you do that one more time, I'm pulling the trigger. I can promise you, you'd find strength to stop and start doing things different can I get an amen in the house but see we like to I'm just waiting on God I'm just waiting on God no let me tell you this what God he listen listen he when he gives me something it's not just for me it's for all of us amen but let me let me say this today we are going to stand before the God of this universe. And listen, I've been reading some things about how God, I've been reading in the old book how God sees things and how he looks at things. And everybody's got him pictured as some big rainbow and unicorns and kumbaya and magic dust. And, and he's God. And, and, and I just pull him out of my pocket. But I'm telling you, there is a God of judgment that you're going to stand before. And I just read the, about two weeks ago, he said, if you don't tell them, their blood's going to be on your hands. That's pretty cut clear. Is that cut clear? That if you don't tell them, you will stand before God and you'll give an account and their blood will be on your hands if you don't tell them. Let's say this out loud. Right is right Right right. and wrong is wrong. And I'm going to keep telling that until I draw my last breath that you can mealy mouth around and think that everything's okay. But I'm here to tell you today, you're going to stand before God and give an account for even it says the words that we speak out of our mouth. Boy, let me tell you something. That makes, that makes me nervous. How about you? Huh? Come on now. 
But oh yeah, but see, let me tell you something. I'm going to be standing right here telling you heaven is sweet and hell is hot. And there is a road that leads to destruction. There is a road that leads to destruction. And it is up to you and I which road we're going to travel today. I say let's get in the good life. Let's say let's shun evil. And let's run toward the things of God. How about that? Amen. Are, we, are you with me? Amen. So we know to, to begin this is to acknowledge him. See, I got to acknowledge him in everything I do because you know what? Okay, how many times have you heard this? Well, the reason I don't witness is because, you know, I'm afraid they might have seen me out, you know, and then they're going to make fun. Y- y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, come on. But see, he's saying I need to acknowledge him. So you know what? I'm going to say it like this. If you've got something going on that's done in darkness, then I got to tell you, you better bring it to light. You better bring it to light and let God get in the middle of it. Because there'll be no excuses when we stand before Him. You know, I can't stand up there before Him when I stand before God for me. And guess what? We're all going to go that round. But I can't stand before God for Jackie. And Jackie can't, can't go up and say, Well, God, wait a minute. Let me stand in Barbara's place. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. Because you're going to stand by yourself and you're going to give an account. How many, how many, how many of us want to make sure our slate's clean? Yes. Now, I'm not telling you today that, that you're perfect. Because the only one that I've ever met that was perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. He's the perfect one. Without sin, without sickness, without failure. But you know what? This book teaches us to strive for. That means to press it, press my way in for to live right. Are y'all with me? Amen. All right, let's turn to Luke, Luke chapter 14. We're going to get this, aren't we? Luke 14. And and I'm going to tell you this too, uh, and I was reading, and I'm not going to quote it because I'm not ready to preach on that yet. But um, I was also reading what God is going to do to the, the shepherds that are, are uh, saying everything's okay and, and we can all just, uh, you know, float along and, and not, not have any judgment. There is judgment for those pastors. And I don't want to be in that judgment. I don't want to be in that one. I want to be in the one that he says, okay, you did good. Come on in here. Amen. Okay, Luke 14 <clears throat> and verse... Uh, 28. <clears throat> and um, planning is also counting the cost. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, Sister Marie because I know she loves me and she don't care if I use her. Uh, but uh, in her, her yard, uh, her yard uh, prep, and, and you know, all of us will be driving by now wanting to go see her yard. But in all of her things that she's been, been doing, uh, you know, she had to count the cost. Uh, because she couldn't go down to the uh, uh, Home Depots and the Lowe's and all that, those stores, and, uh, and walk in and them give her a cart full of stuff free. She had to, let's say, count the cost. She had to count the cost first because it would have been very, and see, the Bible teaches us that, and we're going to go there in just a minute. But if she had started it and couldn't finish it, in other words, if she had enough money to buy, buy three boards and she needed ten boards, and there she's got three boards and can't finish it because she didn't count the cost up to see if she's going to have enough money to do it. See, that's in our planning. But God gives us a principle not only in our natural realm but in the kingdom. In the kingdom of planning. See, there was a, a, a dollar amount that the Lord gave me years ago. And he said, when you reach that dollar amount in your church funds, you need to start looking. And he gave me specifics. And I'm telling you right now, I'm, I've been seeking him for the things that he gave me. I didn't run out. See, see, what I'm trying to teach you today is you don't just run out and go do something just because you know you've got to wait. Say this out loud. I've got to wait on God. And, and there are people who have run out. They knew that God was, wanted them to start a business. And they'd run out and start a business. But it wasn't right season. 
And they'd get ahead of God and they'd fall on their face and, and, and it would go kaputs. And, but yet the desire and the, and the yearning was still in there to start a business. And if that is in there, the God put that in there because he designed this whole earth to take, we are to take care of one another in this earth. Because if God didn't do that, you know, wouldn't that be awful if everyone that was born in this earth wanted to be a contractor? There'd be no food to eat. Do you see? There must be balance. Say that out loud. There must be balance. There must be balance. Okay, then, but then I've got to be the one that's going to give my, be given to balance instead of I've got to have it my way. I got to do it my way. No, if Marie said, no, I'm fixing to build me a flower bed and I don't care how much money I got. She went up there and bought three boards and threw them boards down there and that's the end of that. Well, guess what? It wouldn't benefit her or it wouldn't benefit those who drive by to enjoy the beauty of it. Do you see where I'm going here? What you do on a regular daily basis will always affect someone else around you. Now, are we getting this? Okay, because we got to get this. Are you prayed up today? If you're prayed up and ready on go to pray for people and to, if somebody's sick, lay hands on, pray for them. That's going to affect those around you. But if you got to spend 30 minutes to repent and get it right so you can pray for somebody, I'm here to tell you, you also going to affect somebody with that. So who, who, whose choice is it for us to be ready? Huh? Oh, ouchie, ouchie. That's right. That's what my daddy used to say. He'd say, ouchie, when that word would cut. But see, this word is, is a cutting sword. But it's not to punish us. It's to make us prepared and ready for his coming. I want to be found doing the will of God when he comes. I want to be found doing the work of God when he comes, don't you? Instead of dilly-dallying. We got stuff to get done, but we got to make plans and preparation. Amen? All right, let's read. Luke 14, 28. This is Jesus talking. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it? See, Jesus is telling you just what I just told you. Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. So now then, he had just, he had enough just to lay a foundation, but not enough to build and do anything else. And everybody walks by, you know what they'd say, oh my God, have y'all seen Marie's yard? Yeah, she got three boards thrown out there, not a flyer, or nothing. Have y'all seen that? And she's done. So do you see, I know Marie's going to kill me after church, isn't her? But look here, see, what you got to understand is that you, your decisions every day, say every day. Every day, every day, every day, every day affects someone else besides you. Amen? Amen? Okay, okay. So we don't want to be a laughing stock in the kingdom of God. You know, um, I was uh, sharing with uh, one of my children here a while back about uh, when I first fell in love with Jesus. And I used to dress up and try to, you know, look my best when I was out there shutting bars down. And, and I told the Lord, I fell so in love with him. I said, Lord, from this day forward, I will try my best to never be an embarrassment to you. Never. I want to always look my best. And, you know, we have a little country church here, a little, little church. And I've had people even say to me, you, do, you shouldn't dress the way you do. You need to dress down. You need to be more casual. And I said, just look at them and say, well, that ain't going to happen. Because, you know, I tried to look my best for the devil, and I'm going to try to look my best for Jesus. Amen. And that's how I feel about that. But that's a plan and a desire. See, that's a desire and a plan that you got to stick with whatever your plan is. Amen? Amen. Okay, verse 30. Saying, you see, there, here he is. Jesus still talking to us. This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war? Okay, now we're talking about a battle. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first? Say first. first. And consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. So now then he's saying, when you got to go to battle, you better, you better count the cost and consider, are you able to, 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 to engage in that battle? 
Because if you're not, you better go find you somebody pray. You know, I've had people call me and say, Sister Barbara, there's demonic activity going on in so-and-so's house. And I need you to go over there and, and, uh, and, and anoint that house and pray. And I'd say, well, why don't you? I'm not going. That's what they'd say. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. I said, well, you got the same authority I got. Yeah, well, he listens to you better than he does me. I'm not going. But see, what he's saying is, you got you, you to gotta make a plan and a preparation and count the cost you, on everything. Say everything. everything. On everything. Now listen, all y'all on live stream, don't be calling me to come anoint your houses. <laughs> y'all anoint your own house. <laughs> okay, and verse 32 says, or else... While the other is yet a great way off, he sends an amb- uh, say that word, Jackie. Ambassage. Ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all. Say, uh, forsaking all. Forsaking all. Okay, now does that sound like a whole hum life that I can just let life carry me around and, and dibble dabble and do a little this, little that, and, and a yellow cat and da 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 da. No, it says, let's read it. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Did you know I didn't write those words? I'm reading them to us, but I didn't write them. Jesus Christ is talking to us today. Let's all say this out loud. He's talking to me. me. Is he? Is he talking to you today? Verse 34. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Look at verse 35. It's neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. See, salt is a preservative. When we we make our declaration at the end of this service that I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. And and every time I say that, I mean that to the depth of my, my being that Everything that I am and what is in me that I desire to to be so salty that it will call you know how when you have something real salty you're so thirsty that I can be that salt to cause you to thirst for God. Do you see? But he's saying if your saltiness has lost its savor, has lost its strength. Have you ever had salt that you, you salted something and it's still, and no matter how much salt you put on it, it just would not taste salty? Have you ever had that happen? You know what happened? That salt lost its, its strength, if you will. He's telling us something today. Don't lose the strength of your salt. Don't lose it. Say this out loud. I'm not going to let anyone or anything cause me to lose my saltiness. Do you mean that? All right. Okay. Now then, we're going to talk about preparation. So now we've talked about planning, and now we're going to talk about preparation. And we're going to turn to Ezra chapter 7. And we're just going to get one verse there, and then we're going to move on. Are we learning today? <clears throat> you know, it's just amazing how that, that uh, it was about three days ago that the Lord dropped this in my heart and I knew I was going to be preaching on it today. Um, he, and, and I know there are things online that, uh, that, that some people can look up and get things for, for ministry and for preaching, but I am so thankful that the Holy Ghost d- directs us gives us what we need for that hour. Amen. Amen. Um, Okay, so Ezra chapter 7, and we're going to get two verses right there. 7 
And now we're looking at preparation. We talked about planning, making plans, and, but there is a, there's preparing. So verse uh, chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. Do, well, I'm going to stop right there because when I read that, do you have God's hand upon you? You sure do. Amen? Okay, look at verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. See, there's one thing to seek the law and to understand what it's saying, and, but it's another thing to do it. In other words, did you know what? And now this will make you smile. I have a drawer full of cookbooks at my house. Recipes of all sorts that I've got from different people laying in a drawer. And did you know it looks good? Some, and I've tasted a lot of it. It is good stuff. That doesn't mean I'm going to produce it in that kitchen. I've, got, I've even got the ingredients probably up, all up in the cabinets that I could make plans and, and I, could, I could make it happen. But you know what? As long as those cookbooks are laying in that drawer and there's not any preparation or planning, guess what? There'll be nothing produced. And this is what he's saying to us today. Isn't this wonderful that he loves us enough to, to say this to us? Amen. Because see, Ezra... It said Ezra prepared his heart. He wasn't saying, well, I'm just waiting for God to do it. I'm just waiting for God to come down, slap me around, twist my arm, make me do it. No, look what it said. Ezra prepared his own heart. Well, how, what does that mean? Okay, number one, I got to guard my heart. I heard, I heard Brother Jackie this morning before praying for the sick said, all right, if there's anything in your heart. Do y'all remember that? If there's anything in your heart right now, forgive right now. Let that go. Why would he say that before praying for the sick? Preparing your heart. Pre- making preparation in your heart. Because where does God look? In your heart. In your heart. You, can, so you, can, you can talk a good talk and walk a good walk all day long. But you can't fool God. Because he looks in the heart. Amen? Amen. Okay, so look. <clears throat> for Ezra had prepared his heart to do what? To seek the law of the Lord and to do it. So there was two things, seek and do. Seek and do, seek and do. And to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. And so once that you have made a decision, you're going to prepare your heart. You're going to follow the Lord. You're going, to, you're going to study that word. You're going to get more of it in you. You're going to spend more time praying. See, those are plans and preparation of being a Christian. You know what? I was witnessing somebody the other day, and I said, so are you Christian? I don't, you know, I don't ever ask them what church you belong to, because I don't care. I really don't care. I said, are you Christian? And the gentleman says, no, I go to church, but I'm not Christian. I said, well, why not? Why wouldn't you want to be a Christian? Well, I just think there's a lot of things you got to do and not do to be a Christian, and I'm not there yet. I said, well, boy, I used to believe that way too until I learned Jesus took upon himself every sickness and every sin and every disease and bore everything in my place and that he wasn't looking for somebody perfect. He's looking for somebody to have a relationship with. You know, that that man got real quiet. (laughs) He got quiet there for a moment and that was all right. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to make preparation and plan to serve the Lord. And, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, again, there are, there are so many bondages in this earth now that it's unreal from when I was a little girl. When I was a little girl, we didn't even think about I don't even know if we owned a lock for our house. I don't think we did. I don't think there was a, I don't ever remember seeing a key when I was a little girl. I don't think there was one. Our church, our community church, do you think that thing was locked? No, that's the reason I learned to play a piano. Because I could walk up the hill when I was nine years old and go in there and, and try to practice what I saw that girl doing. Of course, that didn't work, but I tried it. 
But you see, you see from then to now. Okay, so then is God still the same? Yes. Even though the increase of bondages is much more now than it was when I was a little girl. I mean, there's stuff now that's mind altering. That these young kids are on, and I'm here to tell you, these, uh, oh, I don't even want to go there. This generation that's being brought up now is being brought up for rebellion. And if you and I don't live it in front of them and teach it to them, then it's not their fault. It's our fault. Can I get an amen in the house? Because we want to blame the kids with it. But I'm telling you right now, I don't put blame on the kids. I put blame on the parents. It is time to stand up for what is right and stand against what is wrong. Yeah, but mama, uh, you know, all my friends are doing it. Well, you know what I used to say to my kids? I don't know if they remembered or not, one in particular. <laughs> but I would say, when they'd come in, they'd say, well, mama, you know, all, all the, I don't know why you won't let me do it because all of my friends, all the other kids are doing it. And I'd look them dead in the eyes and say, you know, I am so sorry that your friend's parents don't love them like I love you. That was my answer. I'm very sorry they don't love you. They don't, they don't love their kids. But I'm telling you, as long as I'm breathing, you're not running them roads, and you're not going to do this, and you're not going to do that. Well, that's not popular. They're all put out. Well, you know what? Hell is very popular. Is that where you want them to end up at? I'm telling you, Sister Melissa, keep praying by the Spirit. Amen. Keep walking your house and standing for what's right and against what's wrong. Amen? Amen. 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 The Bible said if you raise them, if you raise them in the way they should go, when they become old, they'll not depart from it. I'm very thankful that I've got three daughters. I gave birth to three daughters and all three of them are sitting in this house today. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. But neither is their mother. How about that? Whoa, I got a big amen. <laughs> but you know what? What are we about? What are we about today? The perfection of Jesus. What are we about today? Shunning evil and doing right. Making preparation and plans for the kingdom instead of yourself. Can I say this today? It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. The kingdom, building the kingdom of God, getting people that's just lost, saved. You know, I'll go ahead and tell you this. That gentleman that I was witnessing to the other day, he said, as soon as I get home, because I told him, I said, you can, just, you can become a Christian right here, right now. He said, as soon as I get home, I am gonna, I'm going to ask him into my heart. I said, yeah, that's the way it is. And you know what? We ended up, me and uh, his wife, he and his wife and me, standing out on the street in front of a doctor's office. I didn't care. Joined heads praying. And let me tell you, the Holy Ghost showed up. He will every time. Do you hear me? All he's looking for. Is he looking for you, for you to present you? Well, if you do, you're going to present a lot of failures and shortcomings. Did you know that? But if you'll present Jesus, if you will every time say, look, I'm not telling you about me. And my little brother, you, you, need, you just need to know that you, you are a great witness in the kingdom of God. And don't you, don't you let any of your past or present hinder you from telling someone about Jesus. I just need to say that to you. Because it's not about you. See, it's about him. Because can I say this? As much as I love you, I cannot do one thing for you. I can't. I can't break the power of Satan. I can't cause you from sickness to be well. I can't take you from poverty to wealth and riches. I can't. I don't have that ability. But I can give you Jesus. And Jesus has paid for it all. And all he needs is somebody to give Jesus. Amen? Are we, are we getting this? Yes. Woo! Yes, we're getting it. Turn to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. 
That's Jeffrey's favorite. And you know, it's only six verses. That'd be a good one for you to, to memorize if you don't already have it memorized. But we're just going to look at a couple of verses in it, four to six. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Did you notice it didn't say death? It said the shadow of death. Yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I'm not going to be afraid of anything. I'm not going, I'm not going to. See, there's that planning and preparation again. There's that planning. I got a plan that I'm not, I'm not going to fear evil. Not going to. Okay, here we go. And how can I say that and, and it work because of the next words? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. This is what stood out to me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence. In the presence of mine enemies. Does that mean I'm standing with pressure? Does that mean I'm battling? Does that mean I'm pressing and fighting my way through? Does that mean that, that it's not kumbayas and magic dust? Does that mean I got to make a stand? Does that mean that I got to make up my mind I'm going to serve Jesus? It don't matter if anybody else does or doesn't. Does that mean that if I'd be there and do that, that while I'm in my pressure and while the enemy is around me, that my master is preparing my table right there, right then in the presence of what I'm going through? And I'm telling you right now, he will not prepare a table for you and then withhold it from you. He's preparing your table for you to come and eat. Come dine with me, he says. Come fill up with me, he says. He's, he, he's saying today that what he's prepared for you, he's got it waiting for you to partake of it. Woo, hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus today. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm telling you, this is, ex is this exciting? Look at verse, uh, verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's a refreshing, that's a refreshing time when I'm in the middle of the battle. Here he comes every time. My cup runneth over. What is your cup? Remember when Jesus said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, no, nevertheless, thy will be done. No, I, no, I've come this far. Let me tell you something. Get your cup out and let that thing run over with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How about that? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How long you plan on, are you, are you planning on uh, serving the Lord and going to church and, and uh, you know, and being uh, in his presence and being with godly people? Do you know how important it is for you to be with godly people? Yeah, it's very important. Mama used to say, if you run with the wolves, you'll howl with them. That's an old saying. That's not in the Bible. That's an old saying. But it's a true old saying. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired in bondage and bound in things, stop running with those who are doing the same thing. Cut yourself loose and be free. And get free because he we're reading he's made a way for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> okay, turn to Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two, and we're just gonna get a couple of verses there. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty and twenty-one. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Now, now we know that we are vessels, right? Yes. Amen. He's talking to us. Say this out loud. He's talking to us. Okay, so we are the vessels that he's talking about. There's he said now he's saying in a great house. There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. So that would be like clay, like 
clay pots and, and uh, wooden pots of, of vessels. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21. If, if, that's conditional. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Now there's a list up here and I don't have time to take you there, but you can study this later. If a man will purge himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor. So how can I change from a vessel of dishonoring, dishonor to the Lord, to a vessel of honor? That I stop waiting on God to fix me and I purge myself. Huh? Is that right? Are, we, are you with me? Okay. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared. Now there's that word, pre preparation. Prepared unto every good work. Okay, so now then, could we say that we are a work in progress? Could we say that? Okay, so if I'm real strong in, um, uh, oh, let's say, I'm real strong in decorating a house. Because I like doing that. So I'm real strong in that. But I'm real weak in cooking because I don't like to cook. I know that's a shock to y'all, but I don't like to cook. I can, just don't like to. Okay, so don't you think it would be crazy for me to go to God and say, Oh God, help me with my decorating. Help me to get better and do better with my decorating when I'm already doing that. What, okay, so if I needed help with something, it would be the something that I need to work on. Are we understanding this? See what we'll do. We'll go to God and say, oh, God, thank you that I can decorate and, oh, I'm good to go now when I'm sitting in there with cookbooks and not cooking a thing. Huh? You see, I'm using me for an example here just so you can see in everyday life how we do. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy how we do stuff. Okay, so then what have I got to do to prep and prepare myself is that I got to first look in the mirror and open my own self to my own self and let the light look. And now today, I've got to say to myself, what is it about me that I don't like? Oh yeah, it's going to get quiet in Zion, but we're going to get this. We're going to get it. What is it about myself that I don't like? Are you going to wait for God to fix that? Or are we going to start working on that area? Huh? To get stronger in it. Now don't y'all be asking Jackie if he's getting food cooked over there. Don't y'all be meddling now. <laughs> But we're getting this, aren't we? Are we getting this? That yes, we are a work in progress. And yes, there are things that we have strengths in. That man, we wouldn't back up for nothing. You know, tenacity of a bulldog. But then we do have those things that we, come on, we, we're weak in, that we succumb to it. We get caught up in it. And then the devil will say, see there, see there. Why even try? Look what a failure you are. Has anybody ever heard those words? Look what a failure you are. But you know what? You're not a failure. I need everybody in this house to say that out loud. I'm not a failure. Let's do that again. I'm not a failure. See? Who's making the preparation today? You are. Who's going to give you the strength for it? He is. He promised it. Didn't he just promise it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so in um, we just we just learned that in preparation that we can either be a vessel of dishonor or a vessel of honor. And I'm gonna say this today. To be to be pure vessel of gold and silver, you must be tried. You must be tried because gold and silver has to have heat applied to it. It has to be be so that the impurities can be, be 
taken out of it. And it, the, the purer it is, the more heat that's applied to it. But if you apply heat to wood and clay, it will destroy it. Now, which of these vessels you want to be? I want to be a vessel in the house that can be used anytime, anywhere. Come on. Anytime, anywhere. That means a vessel of silver and a vessel of gold. Are we willing to walk through and be put in the fire? I can remember, I remember many times laying on my face weeping before the Lord and telling Him way back there when I was getting stuff brought out, getting out of me. Some of y'all may not ever been there and don't know what I'm talking about. But when you were, be- I was being delivered of things and laying on my face before Him. And there were many times that I cried to the Lord and said, Lord, let me off this potter's wheel just for a moment. You know why? Because he was burning stuff out of me so he could replace that area with him. Are we getting this? You want to be full of the Lord? Then you got to stop being full of yourself. Let's all say this out loud. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Our purpose. Purpose for the future. I don't have purpose for yesterday. Yesterday's gone. I can't get it back. I've got to have purpose for my future. And I'm going to ask you today, what is your purpose? What is your plans? What do, do you plan to be exactly who you are and what you are one year from now? Or do you plan to be healthier? Do you plan to be more alive? Do you plan do you plan to be more blessed? Do you plan to be more full of God? Do you plan to shed off habits that are killing you? Huh? Or do you plan to stay in the rut that you're in right now? See, it's all it's all it's all our decision. Isn't that wonderful that God doesn't have a bunch of little robots down here that he winds up and sets them out and says, well, this is how it is. No, let me tell you, uh, um, and Sister Verna don't mind me using her either, but she was challenged with a, a terrible car wreck that almost killed her. It almost killed her. And I believe had it not been for prayer and the word of God coming out of her mouth, she wouldn't be sitting here today. Did she have to press her way through some stuff? Did you, Sister Vernon? Did you have to press when you didn't feel like it? Did you have to speak the word and being put in a place that was full of COVID and on top of all of that caught COVID in the middle of broken bones from head to toe and still put in a place? Can I tell you, do you think that was a road of ease for her? Did she have to press her way through and say, I'm not giving up, I'm not moving, and but speak to Psalms 91 if it ever came out of her mouth. It came out during that time. Am, am I telling the truth, sister? Okay, so what I'm saying to you today, instead of trying to find something to blame God with, get your blame back on where you walking and to know that you got a God who's going to take care of you if you be willing to pay the price. Amen. He's going to bring you out no matter what crosses your path. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because you know what? I, and I'll hear people say this. Well, I know why old brother Tom got that. Because I can tell you now how I'd open that door for him to get that. Well, I'm here to tell you little babies get it. Get the same stuff that's going around out there. What door did they open? None. There's a devil out there that wants to kill you and steal from you and take from you. But Jesus Christ died, gave his life, laid it down so we could ever live in abundance and in authority and dominion in this earth. Are you going to help knocks and beats and bangs happen in this earth? Yes, you are. But where are you at with him today? Whew, boy, I'm telling you, I'm getting freer by the minute. Last scripture, Galatians 4. Galatians 4, last scripture. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 through 7, is our scripture to live free. Live free. Verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. So as long as I'm not willing to grow up in this thing and shed off and, and, stand, and, and stand for what's right, I'm going to be a little baby in the kingdom of God forever. And I can tell you this, I've been in service with some that they've been in the way, in the way. Do you hear me? That's what they used to call it. They're in the way. I thought, yeah, they are in the way. 
been in this thing for 20 years and still somebody's got to give them a bottle and pat them on the back and make sure they shake their hand or they won't be back. Little babies. But look what he said. As long as you're a child in this thing, you're no different than a servant. Though, though you be Lord of all, because Jesus made you Lord of all. Verse 2, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. What were we under in bondage of? When you're children, you're just still little babes in the Lord. You're still in bondages. Say this out loud, I got to grow up. Got to grow up in this thing. Okay. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Oh, boy, this is good. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. Where? Where does it say? Into your heart. Crying, Abba, Father, which means that breaks down the wall of tradition between you and God, and it becomes personal. Abba means daddy. It means on a personal level that God no longer is this, this entity out there somewhere that is sitting to judge me. I now had that wall broken down, and his name is Jesus, that now I can march into him and say, Oh, Father, I have need of you today. Isn't this good? Is this good news? Yes. Amen. Amen. But what have I got to do? I got to, I got to own purpose. I got to make a decision that a year from now, I'm not going to be living and doing the same things I'm doing right now. That's right. Huh? Yes. That a year from now, I'm going to be on purpose, on place, in place, and, and in the right season with God. Yes. Huh? Amen. Are you with me? See, you don't know what God's got in store for you. A year from now, you don't know where you're going to be or what you're going to be doing. But God does. Why? Because it said, if I will acknowledge him in all my ways, that he'll direct my path. Is that right? If you don't get anything else out of this message today, you need to get that scripture, that if I will, he will. Let's say that out loud. If I will, he will. Let's do it again. If I will. He will. he will. Let's do it one more time. If I will, I will. He, will. he will. Do you believe that? Yes. Have, we, have, we, have we got this thing under our belt now? Yes. Look at verse 7. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. They're not mo no more a servant. See, because a servant in a house, um, uh, they have no choice of what goes on in that house. They have, they have no authority in it. If the master of the house says to the butler or to the baker, if the master of the house says to the baker, go bake me some homemade bread. That baker could be sick as a dog and not feel like going or not in the mood to bake bread. But guess what? The baker will go bake bread. Yes. They have no say so. And so what he told little bones, what he's saying to us today is that we no longer are useless in the kingdom. That we no longer are just a servant, but we are now sons. The son comes in and sits down at the table with the master and talks over business. The son has a direct line to the father. Why? Because it's his inheritance. Amen. Are you getting this? It's your inheritance. Yes. So are we going to take what he's given us today? We're going to prepare and we're going to make plans and preparations for change in our life. How many in the house can honestly say, I won't change in my life? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm going to live free on purpose. On purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Telling you that's a miracle walking right there. Whoo, 
my goodness gracious. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs He'll supply. I'm going to say this. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that you do not have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, personal Savior, it's never too late. It, but it's by a decision that you want, to, you want to have a change. You want to have a turn in your life. You want to follow Christ. Then today is a day to receive Him into your heart. You know what? I could take you out to the graveyard and show you all different ages that left this earth. Newborn to a hundred and some odd years old. The one guarantee that we have is that if we have Jesus Christ, we have safety for our hereafter. That's a guarantee. But if you don't have Him, then you do have a guarantee of life hereafter of torment. And it's just that simple. I didn't write that either. I'm just the messenger. So today, if you do not know that you know, if your heart stopped beating right now, that you would go be with the Lord, then today make that. Make that decision that today's the day to invite Him into your heart. And I don't believe it comes through everybody praying a prayer. It comes through reaching out and desiring for Jesus to come live in your heart. And from that decision, you pray and confess that He is Lord of your life. Amen? All right. Have you been blessed? Yes. Did we receive? Yes. Are, we com are we coming back Wednesday night? Yes. Filled up, running over, full of the Holy Ghost, expecting God to move? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. You ready for a blessing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed, the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm blessed coming in and, going out. and everything I put my hands to. Everything I put my hands to. God, causes it to God causes it to prosper. Our children, Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up, and running over with health, wholeness, completeness, Nothing missing and nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen.